That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Angry Black Girl and Her Monster, the directorial debut of Bomani J. Story, which premiered at the 2023 South by Southwest Film Festival. It is being released June 9th, 2023, courtesy of RLJE Films. Directorial debut. Mm -hmm. I really like the title of this movie. Mm -hmm. Yes, very um, attention grabbing. There's a lot I liked about um, this film. I thought it was very interesting. It is very interesting. It's uh, an update on the Frankenstein story uh, and has a lot of uh, kind of uh, interesting, uh, an interesting perspective into a very familiar story. It tells the story of teenage anti-hero Vicaria who is on a desperate quest to cure death. So Vicaria is 17. We find out when she was eight years old, she witnessed her mother um, be shot and killed mm -hmm. like while she's holding her, um, which of course traumatized her. We also find out that her mother was in medical school at the time. So we meet Vicaria as a 17 year old and she's a freaking genius obsessed with death. <laughs> we hear her say, which I thought was a really good line. She says, um, well, first she says death is the disease that broke my family. So if death is a disease, there should be a cure mm -hmm. and she's going to find it. And this is where Frankenstein comes in because this girl has been stealing bodies to get parts to try to reanimate her brother who was also killed. So it's important to know they live like in, it's supposed to be like an impoverished area with a lot of crime it doesn't look that bad. But, it doesn't. It looks pretty nice. But but but, but we get we get the sense that that's where they are. So she her brother has been killed in an act of violence as well, and she's trying to get, bring him back to life. And she does. She figures out that she's done a lot of things, but nothing has worked until it occurs to her that she needs a huge amount a huge amount of electricity. She brings back to life this monster. And the bulk of the film is the monster wreaking havoc in this in these projects. Kills a bunch of people. And then she realizes that the only way to kill him is to hit him with a surge of electricity again. She does. The monster's dead. But it's too late because the Chris has killed her father and uh, her other loved ones. They're calling the monster Chris because that was her brother's name. But yeah, the monster has killed <laughs> a lot of people. So at the very end, she realizes that Maybe she should bring them back to life because their bodies are more fresh. So we see her bring back her best friend. Aisha. Who happens to be pregnant. And it seems to be effective. But who knows the long-term effects. But then the film just ends. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There, there were a lot of really interesting things. So I think the actor playing Vicaria. Mm -hmm. Laia De Leon Hayes. I thought she did a really good job. Who's in the Equalizer television series opposite Queen Latifah. Oh, I didn't know that. She's been in a, done a ton of uh, voice work as well. Oh, wow. Well, mm -hmm. I thought she was quite good. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Forrest Whitaker's son. Denzel Whitaker. He is in it. He plays the local drug dealer who's responsible for the death of Vicaria's brother, Chris. I thought he did a really good job. Yeah, I, I, I'm used to seeing him so much younger. It, it's yeah, it took me a second to recognize him, but I thought he did a fine job. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go through my notes. The movie was more gruesome than I was expecting, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. The practical effects are really strong because mm -hmm. I'm assuming this movie didn't have the biggest budget. No, uh, which I think is apparent sometimes, yeah. but when she's kind of gleefully uh, sewing body parts together, it's kind of creepy. It was very effectively <laughs> creepy, yes. And then when we see the monster, you know, again, maybe they didn't have the budget, so we, it's shot in that way that's sort of like we only see pieces of the face, mm -hmm. but I thought it looked really good. For what we do see, it's, a, yeah. it's effective. And also, you know, part of the strength of that is... You know, it's it becomes less scary when you see too much of the monster anyway. Right. So that you know, so we know what's up with Vicaria because right away there's this little girl who I believe is the sis, the the young sister of Vicaria's best friend. She sort of tags along with Vicaria because Vicaria doesn't go to the school in her neighborhood. She goes to what they're saying is a white school for like gifted kids, and the little girl's calling her mad scientist. 
So it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's... If we're not being too subtle. Mm -hmm. And then she goes like, oh, you have ketchup on your glasses. And it's like, well, no, that's blood. <laughs> uh, that little girl is Jada, played by Amani Summer. I was impressed with the, the screenplay, mm -hmm. which I think the director wrote. wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with uh, Vicaria's character. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very well done. And then she has the line where the little girl goes, oh, uh, you think you're better than us because you go to that white school. And Vicaria says, no, the white school's smart because I go there. And then, <laughs> Yo, yeah. and then we get one scene at the white school with a terrible teacher. Uh, and, and granted, Vicaria is being disruptive, but she's excited to talk about her theory, because she's smart, and the teacher is very rude and demeaning, and it that escalates very quickly. That was a good scene. In a way that is uncomfortable and felt authentic. Yeah, to well, because the teacher calls her, like, Vicaria, and she goes, my name is Vicaria. And the teacher goes, I'm going to call you Vicky, because it's easier. And I was like, oh! <laughs> and then Vicaria goes... Well, since it's easier, I'm going to call you Miss Bitch. <laughs> I thought that was really good. Yeah, but then, of course, what follows is, I guess, to be expected. But, uh, yeah, and so, again, I think, but I think that makes the first half hour of this film really strong. I agree. Yeah, because then we also, like, people in the neighborhood know that there are bodies missing. So by that point... They know there's someone that they're calling the body snatcher. And as the audience, we're, you can put two and two together that... Uh, Vicaria is taking bodies because we see her go into like her little work area. Like she has like, there, there's a room in the projects that she keeps locked mm -hmm. and that's where she's doing all of her work. Well, there's, it's like a condemned building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an actual old Boris Karloff film who played Frankenstein, but there's a film that he's in that's quite good called The Body Snatcher as well. Mm. With similar elements. I think because we were talking about like when you remake a story, like what is the purpose? Like, like what are you going to do that's fresh? And I think this film does a really good job of bringing a fresh perspective to the story of Frankenstein, particularly like this young black girl living in this environment where there is like black on black crime, police brutality, the education system, like, like it's bringing all of these things in a way that I think is very well done well because what's the argument she gets in at the dinner table with aisha with that that's pretty rapid fire because uh, again uh she believes that death is something that can be cured so people don't really have to die but then aisha who's uh, presented as a little bit more militant because she's trying to get her siblings to read uh, malcolm, malcolm X. x's autobiography rather than the, the bullshit about christopher columbus that would get stuffed on our throats that fantasy fairy tale uh but but saying that to live longer for what? To be part of the system that's going to continually oppress us. And I, I think that is really what's most interesting about this take on the material. Um, and then it, you know, it's... Well, the dinner scene's interesting too because they turn it around because Aisha's mom says that death doesn't have to be so miserable. Mm -hmm. And then for whatever reason, Vicaria thinks like, yeah, let me perk up a bit. So then we get a scene where it's almost like family matters, which I thought was... <laughs> Pretty smart because it kind of takes you out of mm -hmm. the nightmare that we're experiencing. Yeah, there's some some levity, but yeah. so Chris, the monster, is also has killed a police officer. So we have cops roaming the neighborhood, being threatening and imposing, and it, that leads to a scene of I think um, Aisha's mother, Sequoia, is that her name? Um, telling the children, reminding them, kind of of the script that you have to tell black kids about, and it, it just reminded me of like it's like literally having to live in an occupied city, like like during the Nazi occupation, is you have to uh, be prepared to st say something that's uh, safe and normalizing. Yeah, when so the way Vicaria realizes that she needs a huge amount of electricity is because one of the little neighborhood boys gets shot and killed in a random act of violence. And they're trying to resuscitate him. And they were try attempting to resuscitate him with a defibrillator. So that's when it clicks in her mind. That's a really well, good scene too because you can see him, him, he's dying in front of our eyes, in front of her eyes. And they uh, every time they de defibrillate him, he comes back for a second and they make eye contact, which I thought yeah, was... Yeah, I thought that was... I mean, it's... Again, it's more disturbed. Like, I was kind of disturbed, but in a good way. Like... I wasn't expecting this film to kind of have me like, whoa. What I didn't think worked as well is kind of how Jada, the young girl, is a kind of a conduit for Chris. And there's one scene that's almost like out of, you know, Tendu and Newton in, in Beloved, where she's... He's, so, he's, I think the weak... 
get like the the biggest weakness of the film would be some of the acting, <laughs> particularly from the children, and I think the little girl, yeah, I it's hard. It's hard. It's to... a little rough. Mm -hmm. It's a little rough, but um, the monster does end up killing the dad, like you said. I was confused by the little girl's comments mm -hmm. about the monster. So that kind of took me out because I, she was almost implying that she had seen him before. She mm -hmm. had seen, I was confused. Do you know what she was talking about? Uh, no, that again, that, that's what I was also just saying that I don't know how, what, she's supposedly kind of this conduit for the creature, the monster as well. And I don't know if that's because she's supposed to be uh, pure and innocent. Uh, yeah, that aspect of the story was lost on me. Um, also, Aisha's character, that performance was a little rough to me. Also, I didn't quite understand that characterization because, in, like you already mentioned, she's encouraging her children, well, not encouraging, she's telling them to read Malcolm X's book because she doesn't want them being filled with nonsense that the school's teaching them. So it's like she's very concerned about their education, but in the same conversation, she doesn't seem concerned that her young daughter's going to go play with some person named Chris. And then Vicaria asks her, do you know who Chris is? And she's like, no, probably just some boy in the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. I thought that juxtaposition seemed odd. It's odd, but I don't know. I think that's how also how people kind of are. Maybe. Like maybe. We, we choose what we're kind of more interested in. <laughs> sure, sure. But even with that, I thought that that performance was not at the level of the Vicaria performance. Sure. Miss I Hayes. would I would recommend this film. I mm -hmm. do think it's very interesting. I would absolutely watch this director's next film. Yeah, with, with a I'm assuming that because I think it, it has been quite well received and he'll, he'll likely get a little bit more uh, money, hopefully for his next feature. Which I think you know this is the the kind of storyteller that really deserves that. Yeah, so I do recommend it. My score is reflective of there is a lull. It does, it does hit a wall. Like, the sort of the end of the second act, the beginning of the third act, it was getting a little, like, we need to do something. Because I felt like once the monster kills the dad, I was almost expecting it to kind of wrap up. Well, and then I almost don't know, the, can, is it uh, Kango, the, the, the Whit, Denzel Whitaker's portion of it? I don't know. He's supposed to be kind of this... Uh, underlying catalyst as well and I, I don't know how interesting I felt right yes that so, storyline became yeah. yeah so so I think that was a added to the tedious nature and then again some of these performances weren't up to the level of some other ones so for a debut it's it is impressive yeah uh, I would give it two and a half out of five which means I think it's okay I would agree with that rating anything else no hit the thanks button listen to our podcast bye <laughs> Oh, <laughs>